Apple's Vision Pro has finally become available to buy. And I've tried this thing now for, this is my fourth time demoing the Vision Pro. And you probably want to know, what is this thing and should I get it? I'm going to be doing a whole review of the Apple Vision Pro. But in the meantime, based on my demos, this is what I can tell you about what I know it to be and what I think it can be. In a way, it's pretty simple. Apple Vision Pro is a VR AR headset. Apple's calling it a spatial computer. The reason they're calling it a spatial computer is that it has an M2 chip inside and it can run a ton of iOS apps and it can multitask. It can show multiple apps side by side. That type of stuff is not available on other VR headsets that are standalone or even AR headsets and that's what makes this really unique. The other thing that the Vision Pro has that's really cool is a tremendously good display. And the Vision Pro has some really nice hand and eye tracking to interact. So in all the demos I've tried, I've seen a lot of ways to utilize that experience in a bunch of little examples. Apple has shown a lot of looking at photos and videos and spatial videos, which are 3D videos that you shoot on the iPhone 15 Pro or on the Vision Pro headset to look at 3D moments to remember your, your life or your, you know, your loved ones or whatever. Um, I don't know how much I'm gonna shoot it in a Vision Pro, but on the iPhone 15 Pro, it's pretty easy to shoot if you happen to have that phone and the 3D videos look nice. The interface is very refined, as I've said before. And again, the way you look around with eye and hand tracking, there are these little simple motions here, tapping and dragging, and then you use your eye movements to look around at different things to control and to indicate and tap. Generally, it feels effortless. Occasionally, it feels like I have a little hard time finding focus on the thing I need to tap on. And I'm curious whether that's the eye tracking calibration or if it's me or whatever. But it's a whole new interface for Apple and they're really relying on it. Now you need to make sure that it calibrates with your eyes uh, using a little setup beforehand. And you also can't wear glasses with the Vision Pro. So FYI, you're gonna to need to get prescription lenses. Those cost about $150 via Zeiss and they snap into the Vision Pro. It's annoying that you can't wear glasses in the Apple headset. Now, headsets like the MetaQuest 3, you can put your glasses in or you can also get prescription lenses. Apple is just going the prescription lens option. Uh, based on the ones that they outfitted for me though, it looked really nice. So the other thing you need to know about this thing is that right now, the interfaces look very simplified in terms of the way you tap and drag and move around. Um, it's almost like using a mouse. And how do you type? How do you reach out and grab things? That'll depend on the app. Apple's built-in keyboard for typing is in air, and I did these little uh, taps to do things, or you can look around to focus on things and click on them by using your eye tracking. Those are very hunt and pecky. Uh, you could also get a Bluetooth keyboard and use it that way with a trackpad. Probably not an ideal solution for somebody who may want to do all sorts of virtual typing, but that hasn't been solved yet in, in VR or AR, and at some point it might. They're just, just know about that, that the interactions on that are a little bit of a question mark. Apple did walk through a lot of entertainment options for this headset, meaning video stuff. Uh, not only spatial videos, but trailers for their immersive video format, which is this type of uh, 180 degree, almost like a curved 3D IMAX type feel where you're watching uh, very high res videos, things like Alicia Keys or um, you know, National Geographic type, uh, you know, exploratory or bears walking in water, dinosaurs, um, you know, all sorts of big eye opening type stuff. The video quality looked very good. Sports, that's another one. But what types of experiences are gonna launch? Apple is probably gonna make those available through Apple TV Plus and through their existing platforms to use on Vision Pro. We've seen that type of immersive video format before, but again, Apple's got a really high res version of this for the headset that looks very nice. Uh, there are a few video partners already. Disney Plus, they have a Vision Pro ready app, and I looked at that for a little bit. So. That's pretty cool. In fact, I'm planning a Disney trip with my family. This kind of felt like a little mini Disney trip in that um, when you watch videos, you can pick an immersive environment. So I got to sit in a, a speeder on Tatooine or I was on a, you know Avengers Tower. I was in the Tony Stark building and I could, the resolution of the environment was very high. I could lean over and like see the phone and all the like Thanos scratched out on the, on the phone keys. But you know, it's like a it's like a 3D backdrop and then you're watching movies. There are also gonna be 3D movies. So a lot of 3D films that have been out in cinemas are gonna be available on Apple TV and also in things like Disney Plus. I mean, does that matter to you? It's interesting in that if you wanted a full cinema experience, 
the Vision Pro is really probably going to deliver that. I think that's its strongest suit. Now, the other stuff is a question mark. I, mean, I looked at an app called Jigspace. That is this 3D app that was able to create um, virtual objects that already exists on, on iPads that you could look at this in AR. Um, I got to see this on the headset where I took a F1 uh, race car and suddenly, boom, it was in the room. And I got to walk around it and it looked super high res and that was cool. I'm not sure what I'm gonna use it for, but it points out the potential that this headset could allow you to see really high detailed 3D objects that for education, for training, for design, for research, for all sorts of things, uh, this headset might be really interesting. And that's why it's called Pro in the Vision Pro. I mean, if you're gonna be buying this headset for $3,500, you should know that that is a ton of money to pay for a, a VR Air device right now. You can get a Quest 3 for $500 and it does a lot of great things. Apple's headset could do more pro-y things, but it is very much a work in progress, clearly, in terms of where it's gonna go with the apps that it creates. I haven't seen a lot of those apps that are gonna come out on the headset. And for sure, I'm sure they're gonna come out with ways that this will work with the devices in Apple's ecosystem better. And we'll do all sorts of stuff like that. We will have to see. You're gonna be buying a kind of a, 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 a beta ticket to the future. And this felt like a, a test drive in Apple's concept car for my face. So that's how I would describe the early days of Vision Pro. And that's what you're gonna be if you end up uh, buying one of these. You know what I'd even get into? Eyesight. This thing projects your eyes. Uh, onto the front of the headset, which there are no photos of yet, but I did finally get to see from somebody else at my recent demo. And it's supposed to create a sense of presence when somebody's looking at you working uh, on, the, on the Vision Pro, and it is very uncanny. This thing looks like somebody has kind of 3D projected their eyes onto the headset where it kind of feels like their eyes, but they're not their eyes. It's actually a 3D recreation that can blink and animate along with their expressions. If that sounds as weird as I'm explaining, well, that's how it feels. And it feels almost like you're seeing their eyes, but you're not seeing their eyes. And then when they're working on something, it begins to slowly get clouded up with this iridescent thing that then shows that they're in an app. How that feels and how awkward that feels, I will know further down the line. Lots of questions here, but know that this is very much like a VR headset type thing, but for a much more expanded audience. That's what makes it a spatial computer. And I'll talk to you more about Vision Pro once I've reviewed it. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know below. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.